Chevy Vortec V8 GMT 800 trucks, engine sensors. Here's every single one, where they are, what they do, and how to fix them. Let's check it out, guys. All right, we got a 2002 Chevy Avalanche, formerly abandoned, mini cat eye. And a 2006 Chevy Silverado, big cat eye. So between the 2002, 2006, they're pretty much the same, same sensors, slight improvements, but the 2006 is obviously gonna be updated to improve what was wrong on the 2002 sensors. So there's slight changes here and there, pretty much the same thing. So the 2002 is a 5.3 Vortec V8, and the 2006 is a 4.8 V8. All right, so on these trucks, I only use Delphi, GM Genuine, or AC Delco parts for the sensors. I don't get aftermarket sensors. They don't work well on these GMT 800 trucks. All right, first up right here, we have the mass airflow sensor. Goes for the air box right here. Uh, you can see right there. All right, so here's an old mass airflow sensor off of this truck. So these get dirty, they stop reading right. This meters the amount of airflow in grams that flow past it, tells the computer, look, this much air's going past, mix this much fuel in to make the engine run right. If this thing's dirty, computer doesn't know how much fuel to add to the air mixture, won't run right. So you gotta clean it sometimes. Sometimes you gotta replace them, but normally you can just clean them. All right, so here's the sensor right here, and that's just a honeycomb right there. That's not the actual sensor. The actual sensor is in here. So we have a sensor down in there, right up there, and right there. Those little things going across are the sensors. Then right there, that's a temperature sensor. Computer uses that to read the air temperature that's passing through the air filter. All right, so now we got that covered. Moving on up here, we have some sensors up here. Let's take a look at those. All right, so now we're under the hood right here. We have the idle air control valve. All right, so here's the idle air control valve right here. All this is is a motor in here, and it's got a plunger. And what happens is um, the computer goes, oh, we need more air to idle, pushes the plunger in, lets more air flow. Up, oh, we need less air, pushes the plunger out, seals up, and it gets less air flow to the engine. So these go bad. They get carboned up. Uh, these are not cheap to buy new ones. You gotta clean them out. I've cleaned them out with rubbing alcohol, solvent, got the carbon out of there, and they seem to still work properly. Right there, just pops down in there. You can see it seals up. There's a hole in here, seals it up, or pulls it this way or this way, depending on how much airflow it wants to get into the engine. All right, so if we look down in here, we have our throttle position sensor. All right, so here's the throttle position sensor. This sensor senses your throttle position, just like the name says. So when you press on the gas pedal, it moves the throttle plate, and this sensor moves with it, lets the engine and the computer know, oh, look, the throttle plate's fully open, put more air into the engine, adjust the fuel. Oh, it's fully closed, we don't need as much fuel. So that's how this thing works. It's expressed in voltage um, when you're looking at the computer, and these things can go bad, cause a ton of problems. All right, so here's the sensor right here. Basically just tells the computer um, how open or closed the throttle plate is. So it's just got that inside piece right there that moves around. Um, and this thing right here, it's just like a variable resistor, kind of like a rheostat. It just reads out a voltage to the computer to let you know where the gas pedal is. This is the sensor that tells the computer where is the gas pedal. I get a Delphi one and I just swap it out. This is one of the most important sensors on this engine. So we need to take a look at the 06 right here because it's a little bit different. It doesn't really have an idle air control valve or a throttle position sensor. They're all built into this unit. And this unit, it's got a motor in here. It's more complicated because it's newer. You know, they changed it to this in like 03. Uh, the computer can adjust more on this, but unfortunately it's all built into the throttle body. You know, you kind of just replace the whole thing when these go bad, unfortunately, but you can clean the carbon out of them and try to get them to work properly again. All right, let's take a look at the back of the engine back up in here. We have the camshaft position sensor. Sticks right in the top of the engine, right here. You can see where it goes. I can't get back there because it's so far tucked back up in there. That's where it goes. So here's the camshaft position sensor. Basically, it's just like a little sensor on the bottom of it. It picks up on the rotation of the camshaft of the engine and it provides the signal to the PCM. The PCM says, Okay, here is where the camshaft is in relation to the crankshaft. The crankshaft uses the crankshaft position sensor and both of these sensors, camshaft and crankshaft, 
work in unison with the computer to decide where the engine is in its rotation. Seems complicated, but it's not. Just swap it out. When these go bad, the number one problem is long crank times. When you turn the key, turn it off, maybe take a couple tries. This is number one culprit for that. Swap it out, I bet you won't do that. I like the Delphi ones. I have seen these go bad. When these go bad, um, you know, it can really mess up a lot of stuff. The truck just won't start. Like literally won't start if this is bad. So we get a new one, we swap it out. We don't have to relearn, we don't have to do anything. We'll pop the old one out, pop the new one in, and you know, it's tucked back in there. So not that hard to do. It's just one bolt, swap it out, you know, you're good to go. All right, here is the crankshaft position sensor. So these are probably the hardest to change out on these trucks because it's buried under the starter. You gotta crawl up under there, get the starter off, get your crankshaft position sensor out, get a new one in just like this right here. So on this truck, I had a lot of problems with these. Basically, what this is, is this a little sensor on here. You have the reluctor wheel in the engine, it spins around and as it passes, this sensor generates a signal that looks just like this, like a sawtooth and it's spread out. The faster the engine spinning, closes up the gap between the signal and it lets the computer know where the crankshaft is in its rotation, it uses that for a bunch of calculations. So if this is bad, the truck will stall all the time. Truck stalling, this is the number one culprit. So if you have to swap out this crankshaft position sensor, you have to do a crankshaft variation relearn procedure. I have other videos on that. Only buy Delphi sensors for these. I've gone through all of them. Delphi is the best. So we have a crankshaft position sensor. It is all the way down there under the starter motor. So here's the sensor right here. The reluctor wheel just passes by this. It doesn't rub it when it passes by. It generates that signal so your reluctor wheel can be loose, have a chipped tooth. If it does, you got serious problems. You can't just fix that by swapping out this sensor, but that's rare. And the 06 has the same crankshaft position sensor down there, exactly the same as the 2002 Chevy Avalanche. All right, so here's the knock sensors right here. Now these are the number one bad sensor on these Vortec V8 engines. They're hidden under the intake manifold. You gotta take the whole intake manifold to get them apart, get them out. Um, they're normally soaked with water, sitting in these little cups, completely full of water, all corroded, and don't read properly. They're the same on the 2002 Chevy Avalanche. So when these sensors go bad, you'll see how rusty and corroded they get. Um, now all this does is, is it detects pinging, knocking from the engine, ting, 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 and it reduces the spark and the fuel so the engine doesn't damage itself. So actually some dudes have gotten them and screwed them in just like this on the front right here of the engine, and then that way they can get away without having to take the whole intake apart. So the best knock sensors are Delphi or GM Genuine knock sensors. You get in there, you get new ones, you swap them out, you do it right once. That way you don't ever have to do it again. All right, so here's the 2006 Chevy Silverado. When I had it apart, uh, we got in there, got the old knock sensors out. You can see they were sitting in a cup of water, but once we get them cleaned up, get it dried up, get the new ones installed, you build a dam of silicone around there. Um, that way it can't get water in there in the future and it won't short out. So the water gets in there, pressure wash the engine, you know, drive through a massive puddle, get a little bit in there, rainwater, it gets in there somehow, condensation, when it does, shorts out the sensor, and it doesn't work right ever again. So the knock sensors are probably the most involved sensor on these trucks. You gotta get in there, get the old ones out, get the new ones in, should be good to go. So when I swap these knock sensors out, I always get a new wiring harness. This wiring harness goes bad, just as bad as the knock sensors. You have to swap it out. It gets burnt and damaged. If you don't swap it out, you're gonna have tons of problems and you're gonna be doing it again. All right, so we got the O2 sensors right here. Now there's a lot of controversy about these. Guys have the most problems with these on these trucks. Let's check it out. So we got the O2 sensors right here. Now you have your upstream and your downstream sensors. So on these trucks, we got bank one, sensor one, which is gonna be your upstream, bank two, sensor one, which is gonna be your upstream passenger. Then we got bank one, sensor two, which is your downstream, 
bank to sensor two, which is your downstream. So on these trucks, the upstream is what is most important. The downstream, it just monitors it after the catalytic converter. And some guys will actually delete them out of the tune because you don't need the downstream for performance. So that's emissions, the upstream, bank one, sensor one, bank two, sensor one. These ones are the ones the computer monitors um, in a closed loop or an open loop. So when you start the truck and it's cold, it's in an open loop. It's just warming up, warming up, warming up. They have little heaters in them, help them warm up faster. You might see a heater code. It's the most common with these. The little heater in there, it's gotta get up to temperature so it reads accurately. Once it's up to temperature, it's in closed mode. So it's feeding off of the sensor, open mode, if it doesn't read off of the sensor, it reads off the tables programmed in the computer, goes into closed mode. All right, I'm using the sensor, how do I need to run? So you know, these go bad, obviously. They're in an exhaust stream, it's a couple hundred degrees, you know, they get super hot, they go bad. So you're gonna get Bosch sensors. The Bosch sensors are my favorite for these trucks. Um, they work the best. So these don't have to be swapped out in pairs. Um, you can change them one at a time. I've done it all the time, it's fine. You don't have to reprogram the computer, anything like that. If it's bad, basically just swap it out with a good one. Like I said, the number one common problem with these is that heater. It's got a little heating strip in there. You're gonna notice a heater code. That's what it is, it can't warm up properly. It won't read right. The biggest problem with these, honestly, is they get stuck in the exhaust because they've been in there for 20 years. So here is the oil pressure sensor. This is probably the most common sensor to fail on these trucks. It goes bad the most often. Uh, when it goes bad, you know, it'll just show on the dash. You don't have any oil pressure or the needle will be stuck or you have too much oil pressure. You gotta get in there, swap it out. It's not easy to get to, a lot of guys complain, but it's not that hard. Don't take off the whole intake manifold. All you gotta do is get in there, get the special socket that's deep and reach back there, it takes 10 minutes and swap it out. So let's take a look at the red Silverado. So it's located back there. Here it is right here on top of the engine. It's not that hard to get back in there with the intake off, but it's not necessary to take it off. So as far as I know, the computer doesn't really care what the oil pressure sensor is saying, you know. Um, it doesn't really affect much except that gauge and it might throw a check engine code, you know, throw a light if it's not reading properly. But for the most part, you just get a new one, swap it out, and I like the Delphi one. Then of course we have the oil level sensor, which is down in the oil pan. Tells you on the dash if your oil level is low so that you don't burn up the engine. All right, so the most important sensor on these trucks is your coolant temperature sensor right down in there. So here it is. So there's the sensor right there, and this thing is super important. Probably the most important on these engines. All right, so here's the coolant temperature sensor. This thing monitors everything on the engine. So this sensor right here monitors the temperature of the engine while it's running, but the computer doesn't know how well the engine's running, doesn't know how much fuel the engine's getting, doesn't know anything without this because it doesn't have a fuel sensor, it doesn't have anything like that. It uses the temperature of the engine to say, okay, how do I need to run? You know, how much air does it need? Less air, more air. A bunch of parameters are based off of the temperature of the engine and the fuel tables are adjusted accordingly based off of the temperature of the engine. If you don't believe me how important this sensor is, unplug it while the engine's running and it'll just stall, just like that. So if this is bad in reporting colder temperature uh, or hotter temperature, the engine will stall. If you have random stalling problems, this might be the culprit, it's you know, hidden. You have to really understand how it works in order to grasp it, but if it's bad, the engine can stall. But normally, if it's bad, it just won't read right on your dash. All right, so then we have this sensor right here. This is your coolant reservoir. Now, if you have on the dash it says coolant level low, this is where the sensor is. So it's right here on the bottom of the coolant reservoir. It's just a little float in there, floats up and down, and tells the computer how much antifreeze is in this reservoir. So these things are on the red truck right here. Here's an old spare one, and then it's on the 2002 Chevy Avalanche 2. 
So if it says on your dash, coolant level low, or something similar to that, unfortunately, you gotta get a whole new tank and swap it out. All right, so here's the MAP sensor right here. So this sensor senses the manifold pressure. Um, it senses the pressure inside the intake manifold. Now, I don't have many problems with these, but they do get oiled up and gunked up and carboned up because they have this little hole on the end of them. And the intake, the PCV valve, you know, you get excess oil, get sucked in there. You gotta clean these out every now and then. If they're bad, just swap them out, easy. All right, so here it is right here. You can see this one kind of needs to be replaced because it's got this bad seal on here. But there's the hole I was talking about in the end of it right there that it uses to measure the pressure. And then it's just got an electrical connector right there. There isn't much to it at all. I like the Delphi one. All right, so the sensor goes all the way back up in there. You got to take the plastic covers off and it's sitting right back on there on top of the intake manifold. You got to get this cover out of the way. All right, so here's an intake manifold right here, and here's where the MAP sensor goes. Plugs in just like that. It's gonna be the same down in there, but it just plugs in right there. Electrical connector plugs in. If you think you have a problem with this, just swap it out. Don't even fool with it. Get a new one, pop it out, pop it in. You'll be good to go. All right, that's it, guys. That's all the sensors on these trucks. Um, there's not that many. They don't all go bad at once. I know it sounds like the video is just, they're all bad, they're not. When they go bad, one goes bad, figure it out, swap it out, you know, replace it, and you're back in action, good to go. So, if y'all enjoyed these GMT 800 tips, I got plenty more where this came from. Don't forget to subscribe down below, drop me a huge thumbs up if this helped you out, and comment, let us know what fixed your problem. Check you on the next one. Later.